This week on Inside the Headset, we are featuring the 2021 AFCA Division III Regional Coaches of the Year. These coaches include U.S. Merchant Marine Academy coach Mike Toop, Trinity University coach Jeremy Urban, Albion College coach Dustin Bure, and Central College coach Jeff McMartin. In this episode, these coaches reflect on the 2021 season coming off the COVID year, detail the importance of being present and appreciative of the current job you have, and highlight their past convention experiences throughout the years. But before that, a reminder that you can catch the 2022 AFCA convention sessions virtually on February 22nd and 23rd on the AFCA website. So if you'd like to rewatch one of the sessions or listen to one of them for the first time, make sure you are an AFCA member so you can gain access to all the premier content at AFCA.com. Now, let's get inside the headset. As we start this, I want to talk about kind of what made this year special. I think every year when you have a special year, there's something really unique that happens. Sometimes it changes, and so I have a feeling we'll have some different answers based off of some of the earlier comments. Um, so, Mike, uh, let's go ahead and talk about your year this year. I know this one is your last, too. You might want to reflect on that. Yeah, I, I think for me it's kind of easy simply because I knew before the season started it would be my last one. I uh, didn't tell anyone on the staff or my team until after our first game, uh, just to give them an idea. But uh, So from that standpoint, no one was going to be my last one. It was extra special because you get an opportunity to try and, quite frankly, just treasure the moments on the field. With, with the guys and with, with your players and, you know, really fortunate to have a tremendous staff from that standpoint. So really, you know, the, just having the season we did, the best in academy history, kind of made it very, very, very special. So from that standpoint, I was pretty lucky. Coach Urban, same question. <clears throat> You know, I think that all of us can, can probably attest, like every college coach across the country, the, the difficulties coming off of the 2020, especially the small college um, level where some had an abbreviated spring um, season, some had no season, and just really being able to come in and see the hard work of these guys who've really waited so long to play a season. And we didn't have a lot of super seniors who came back. Um, we had a handful, though, and those guys – um, their leadership and their commitment to, to doing things the right way, um, really understanding the legacy that they wanted to leave off the field, even though they were big time players. Um, that's probably the thing that I'll, I'll take with me the longest, um, just because these guys came back in a selfless manner and really made a point of emphasis to, to make this a special season from a relationship building side of things, a foundation building side of things to try to leave it better than they found it. And their intentionality was inspiring for me and I'll remember that for a long time. That's great. Dustin? Yeah, I, I think agreeing with you about the COVID year, that was uh, challenging for everybody. We were, I was fortunate I had nine guys come back, you know, to have the opportunity to compete for a full season. The unique thing is I, I've been the head coach three years now, one of those being a COVID year, but going through and these, uh, those fifth year seniors were like my first group of leaders that we kind of worked on and developed them. And to watch that all come to fruition with each other and how hard they worked and what they went through the last year, I think just, and then just kind of the relationships with the staff and the players, it was just a perfect storm for, for success this year. How about that? Yeah. Coach McMartin, I'm gonna, uh, Jeff, you and I, have, We've been in this thing for a long time together. Yeah. We were serving on the yeah. board of trustees. And then obviously when I got the executive director's role, uh, Jeff's now um, an officer on our board of trustees and very much appreciate your service. Another great year. Yeah. Uh, you've had uh, quite a few over a period of time. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about this one and, and yeah. why this one was different. Yeah, you know, we've talked, uh, we've, I've talked a lot about this with our team and with our fans and, and, and college community. We've had a lot of special teams over the years. This was a unique team. And that's kind of how I've chosen to look at it. It's very unique for us. It was unique in a sense of like in 2019, we were coming off of a, a, a very good year where we made the playoffs and had a, um, not an, a veteran team, we were somewhat young yet, had a lot of guys that were coming back for their senior year, junior year, and felt like they still had something to prove. And then when 2020 hit, that got taken away. And so many of them were able to, to come back uh, for, that, for, that, for a fifth year or, um, or for their senior year and, and, and after the 2020 season. Uh, it allowed our guys to, and I, and I think what they did so well was they did a great job of bringing everybody together. 
you know, they, they made the freshmen feel as much of a, a part of this and as special as, as, as a super senior did. And uh, they worked so well with our coaching staff and just everybody in our community. Um, we were able to, to have some special wins throughout the season and in the playoffs. And, and I think that those are the things that, uh, that I'll always remember about the 2021 year. It's been interesting because all four of you touched on some things that were similar. But there are also some differences in there. That's as we've had these roundtables with some of the other levels, it's been the exact same thing. It's been the exact same, uh, you know, s small differences. Um, 100th year, centennial, right? Uh, you know, our group was founded to try to take care of football. Uh, and this is the upcoming year, right? We'll be celebrating it throughout the whole course of the year. And we're very excited about that and excited about the direction that we're headed as coaches. There are certainly a lot of challenges, as we all know. Uh, but that's coaches, you know, right? We, we fight through them. I had an athletic director that's basically suggested to me, you know, I've learned over the last couple of years that if I've got a problem, I need to get my football coaches on it because they solve problems. It's probably one of the best compliments I've ever heard from an athletic director about coaches. But I want to talk about this convention. And, uh, you know, I remember a moment uh, like it was yesterday and it was epiphany, an outcome, whatever you want to call it, but it's, uh, it's, it's surreal to me how much I can go back to that moment. And quite honestly, it's motivated me throughout kind of my whole career as being able to kind of fall back on that moment as a young coach and say, okay, this, uh, this is what I need to do. This is how I need to go about it. Um, and I, I just wondered, do you have one of those moments? Do you have something that happened to you here at the convention? It can be, again, a speaker. It can be an outcome in terms of a job. Uh, it can be outcome of not getting a job, because sometimes those are as big a blessing, quite honestly, as we all have experienced that looking down the road. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I want to see if you guys kind of have any of those moments, Mike. Uh, sure. You know, I, I went to the academy and I, and I served when I got out and was able to do high school on a side. Uh, so when I was, when I, when I left, when I fulfilled my commitment and I was fortunate to make the break to the coll collegiate level, I worked for Bob Ford at SUNY Albany. Yeah, great, great. And I'm an Albany State guy, as we say, and, you know, 40 probably put out over 100 college coaches. Yeah. And my first ever convention in 83, uh, you know, he kind of told us, this is your first one, keep your eyes and ears open, and, you know, it's changed over the years dramatically. But that first year, I remember listening to Hayden Fry speak, oh, who is yeah. a phenomenal speaker. Yeah. And I think the thing that I really took from him that kind of reinforced who I thought I was at the time was be true to your philosophy and, and, and stick with it. Uh, don't be pressured by you know, outside influences and, and do what you think is right because if it's right then you know you're on the right track and if not just you know listen to other people but I, I think the first convention ever was you know we, we used to use the term first team all lobby and <laughs> I you, think it you, still might be used by the it, way it, I don't it, think it's it, actually going it, out of existence the but but the, the thing that really got me was as a first year guy and a GA walking in and there's guys that are out of jobs and run around giving resumes and then you go to these types of functions where at the other end of the spectrum where they win championships and that type of thing and you, you, know, you, you can't get too self-absorbed when you have seasons like this where we're very fortunate based on our players and our staffs and the support systems where we can be here today. And, you, you know, you, you kind of have to have that dose of reality. And, and then I got to give credit to my, my dad, who was a high school coach, who, who, who brought me in. And he said, you know, as you go through the profession, if you're fortunate enough to, you know, progress and be, get a full-time college job and head job, um, never lose that rearview mirror and just remember where you came from because at some point someone who's in your shoes is, wants to be where you are, so give back to it. Yeah, good point. I think a lot of times guys come to the convention, sometimes maybe looking to get a job and leave, being very appreciative of the one they have. Yeah. Mm. Right? Uh, and so I, 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 I agree. Coach Urban, same, uh, same question. Yeah, you know, I'm pretty new in a lot of ways still to the AFCA convention. Uh, my my coaching um, path has been maybe a little more unconventional. Uh, my wife calls it kind of fairy tale. 
Um, I'm back at my alma mater um, after a, a playing career after Trinity. And uh, my first convention was 2014 in Indianapolis. Coach Moore had just retired. Um, he was coming with us, and it, I, I didn't know what was going on. All, all I could think about was everything I was missing by not being on campus um, in the transition period. And um, we sat down for dinner, and I started seeing him meet so many people who he had networked with over the years. And the thousands of people that I'd walk through the exhibition hall with or through the corridors there in Indy with, and I was like, man, how, how do people get to meet so many? And over the years, I've seen those relationships grow um, from the first Indianapolis time, um, sitting down in a restaurant with a couple of strength coaches um, that had impacted me in a, in a tremendous way in, during my playing career that really helped guide our course of what we do at Trinity um, and seeing those guys continue to follow up um, all the way down to the coaching relationships. Um, David Cutcliffe giving a talk a couple of years later on how he was doing things at Duke, being a high academic institution, and um, so many things that I could cherry pick from him while still putting it into our own flavor at Trinity. Um, the, the convention has become an invaluable part of, uh, part of my year. Um, I love coming every year where that first experience is kind of like, man, I, I just don't know what the big deal is. I was just new to it, sure. and it's grown to be a big part of who we are um, it impacts myself and my staff every year in a great way. Yeah. Uh, same question, please. My first convention was 2006 in Dallas, and you have these grand visions of like, hey, this is how my coaching career is going to go, and then you get here and there's eight, uh, there's 8,000 other people just like you like looking for their first opportunity. But I, I remember sitting on the couch uh, in one of the lobbies, speaking about lobby team, and uh, uh, Coach Reedy from Augie, you know, he is retired, yeah. a legend of Division Three was sitting there, I didn't realize who he was, he didn't have his name tag on, and he just struck up a conversation with me and we just started talking. And then I put two and two together who he was finally. I'm like, wow, that's, that's pretty cool, you know? So you, it always reminds me of like how to treat people. I mean, that guy, one of the most successful coaches in Division Three history, taking the opportunity to talk to a young slappy like myself in 2006, since 22 years old, fresh out of college. And then, uh, you know, and I think one of the, one of the speakers that I, I kind of took something from and you know, when you, when you first start coaching, you kind of emulate coaches you had a little sure. bit, and you're, you're trying to find your voice and who you are as a person. Is it was David Shaw spoke about be yourself because your players are going to see through it, right? So you got to be. He's a pretty stoic guy. I'm an emotional type of guy. You know what I mean? So it was. Uh, I think that one to me gave me confidence that I could be who I wanted to be, be myself, care relationships with players, all that kind of. That's kind of what stuck out to me, those two experiences in my time here. And just being able to spend time with some of my, old, my own coaches who they're all retired now and they're not, they, they don't come as often, but uh, just those times sitting down and then colleagues sitting down X and O with guys in the lobbies and stuff. I think it's just a unique experience you get here. I look forward to it every year. My wife doesn't necessarily look forward to it as much, but uh, I definitely do every year. Um, and I'm excited that we're back here in person again this year. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And I... I had commented on another roundtable about oh uh, one of the things that I, 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 ne I don't know that I was necessarily expecting is I've got 25 guys that are in collegiate coaching now that play for me over the years. And how neat it is just to come back to the convention and to see how excited they are about the profession and what they're doing. And it really means so much to me. Uh, Jeff? Yeah. Um, well, I appreciate what everyone has said today, and, and uh, I'm going to somewhat echo something somewhat similar uh, uh, recollections. And uh, uh, when I was a graduate assistant at Wake Forest, uh, I think it was in 1992, we had the convention in Dallas, and myself and another graduate assistant drove from Winston-Salem to Dallas, and and uh, in getting here and <coughs> meeting uh, a number of the different coaches, I was able to kind of connect uh, with uh, my my coaches from Central College and uh, Coach Bowser actually took me around. Our, our, he's our offense coordinator. He actually became the AFCA assistant coach of the year uh, a number of years after that. But uh, Coach Bowser took me around and introduced me to many of the other Division Three coaches. Um, we, in fact, we sat. Uh, with the coaches from the Minnesota Conference, and, and they had an actual meeting at the, at the convention. And I was able to sit in and just listen to them talk and get to know them a little bit. And, and meeting those coaches and then some of the other coaches from the ACC that, uh, that I was a part of at the time, uh, it was just a, an unbelievable experience to kind of meld, you know, some different uh, divisions and levels together and, and uh, just understanding how important relationships are and the connection and then the type of education that you get here um, I was in from the get-go. You know, the minute I, that my first one, I knew I was going to be coming back again.
That's outstanding. Well, guys, uh, again, it has really been my honor and privilege to be up here with you. Mm -hmm. I congratulate you. Excited for you to have this again as a, a peer-voted award. And, uh, you know, uh, again, we have some challenges facing us as we move forward, but uh, that's what coaches do, right? We persist, and we're going to do that also during this time frame. So, again, thank you, and congratulations. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Inside the Headset. If you heard anything on this episode that you would like to learn more information about, head over to afcapodcast.com where you can find every episode and all of the corresponding show notes. While you're there, take a second to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for the show, please let us know by sending an email to podcast at afca.com. Make sure to follow the podcast on Twitter at Inside the Headset and tag it when you share each episode. You can stay up to date with all things AFCA by following the at we are AFCA Twitter account. Every episode of Inside the Headset can also be found on your favorite audio streaming platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. If you are not currently a member of the AFCA, be sure to find us online at AFCA.com and apply to join over 10,000 NFL, college, and high school coaches from around the country who are striving to be the best they can be. With an AFCA membership, you gain invaluable access to the annual AFCA convention, the bi-monthly magazine, and the new and improved digital library, which contains thousands of videos and articles contributed by hundreds of current and former football coaches. You can also visit AFCAinsider.com to sign up for our free weekly email newsletter on the right-hand side of the screen. It comes out every Tuesday at lunch and is filled with great articles and stories written by many of the same coaches you hear on the podcast. It's geared to help you become a better coach tomorrow than you are today. Be sure to connect with me on Twitter at Coach Mario Price. And remember, the AFCA is not just an annual convention. It is an association that continually promotes education, guidance, and networking. But it is also so much more than that. The AFCA is about celebrating the past and educating the future. It is about developing great coaches who will produce great teams and even better people. So invest in your skill set and impact today by engaging with the AFCA.